Welcome to The Meetings Podcast, the meeting organizer's podcast source for what's new in the meetings and events industry. Meetings Podcast is a conversation with a variety of voices that looks at events, meetings, and media. Meetings Podcast is sponsored by IMAX America, America's worldwide exhibition for incentive travel, meetings, and events. Hey guys, this is Mike. Thanks for tuning in again. Today's podcast is brought to you by IMEX America. It's also brought to you by Audible.com. I love audiobooks, love listening to them, listen to them all the time. Um, so Audible is giving you, a podca- our podcast listener, a free trial. So you go to audibletrial.com backwards slash meetings podcast. They have turd loads of books to listen to. Um, I go on walks and I go work in the yard and I go to drive around in the car and I listen to audiobooks. I also listen to podcasts, but I listen to a lot of audiobooks. So check it out. Might as well try get the one free one. And they have a 30-day free trial. And it's called audibletrial.com backward slash meetings podcast. So let's get right into the interview. And I appreciate you listening. Thank you so much. Welcome back to the meetings podcast. This is Mike McCallan from Grass Shack Events and Media. And today we have Stuart Hall. Hi, Stuart. Hi, Mike. I uh, appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. You, I'm going to read a quick little bio of you which you gave to me, so you already know what you're going to hear, Stuart, but the rest of the people don't. Um, You are the creator of Rock the Stars, a company that uses the power of music to boost team performance and build camaraderie. You are a skilled communicator, program designer, and entrepreneur, and sits on the board of Meeting Professionals International Northern California chapter. Prior to Rock the Stars, you had a 20-year career in the high-tech industry. So, Stuart, do you have a favorite quote? Um, I do. Um, and that would be, if it were easy, anybody could do it. Nice. (laughs) Perfect. I use that to motivate myself. (laughs) And how long have you been, uh, doing Rock the Stars? Uh, Rock the Stars is 13 years old. Wow. That's the same age as my production company. That's funny. Oh, awesome. Um, if it were easy, what was it again? If it were easy, anyone could do it. Perfect. Um, so let's kind of. So you were in the high tech industry. Where did you work? High tech. What, what were you doing? Um, let's see. I was um, uh, an early employee at Compact Computer. Uh, nice. Uh, which was nice. Yeah, I was number five hire in Canada where I lived at the time. Wow. So I spent uh, many years at Compact. Uh, I worked for Computerland, uh, which uh, some people may remember as a retail computer store uh, in the eighties and nineties. Um, and then uh, when I left Compaq, I started up two different high-tech businesses. So one was a high-tech marketing company, and the other was an online magazine. How fun. And you've, yeah. always, you've always played music. Always, yeah. I, I've been playing music since I was in, in the third grade. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> so um, so kind of take us um, how you got into doing the team building, how you got into doing uh, Rock the Stars and your little career path, um, maybe outside of the tech side. Well, um, when I, I started, you know, working for myself, like launching companies and, and, and creating, you know, basically, I, when I left Compaq, um, I, I, I really loved working at Compaq. But what I didn't like was the politics and, and sort of everything that comes along, the bureaucracy, everything that comes along with a large company. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, so being my own boss, uh, starting my own companies was just really a great path for me to take. Um, sorry, Mike, repeat the question. Um, I just said how you got like your career path. How did it get into getting into the events world, basically? Yes. So when, when – um, so when I was in the marketing, like high tech marketing business, both at Compaq and then with my own company, um, my favorite thing to do was to stand up in front of a group of sales and marketing people and motivate them, get them to 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 either sell my products or or or, or you know do a, a number of different things. But motivating was 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 my favorite part of the job. Um, and um, I also, as an entrepreneur, had a short attention span. So my lifespan with most companies that I started was about five years. I would do it for five years and then just really have a a strong urge to do something else and move on. So I had one of those urges um, and was reading a magazine uh, article at the time that talked about 
um, this company in Toronto that was doing team building with music. And it was just one of those light bulb moments. The light bulb went off over my, my head. I thought, well, gee, I can do that. I'm a musician. Uh, I, I like team building. I like motiv- motivating people. Um, so, so I started to put together a business plan and came up with this concept of, of using the metaphor of a rock band um, to do team building with people. And if you think about it, I mean, the rock band is a great team building metaphor in the sense that, that you've got a group of people who on their own may be good at what they do, but yet when you bring them together and put them into a band format, they are infinitely better. And you can think of almost any, you know, great rock band, you know, from the Beatles to U2 or, or No Doubt, they're all better as a, as a, a, together than they would be separately. Mm-hmm. So that was kind of the concept behind the team building. Um, and then I happened to have a neighbor uh, at the time who was an event planner. Um, and I really didn't know much about what he did. I didn't know at the time I knew nothing about the event planning business. So I saw him on the playground one day and just said, hey, John, you know, I've got this idea. This is what I'm thinking of doing. What do you think? And he just looked at me and, and, and immediately said, if you're serious about this, I'll give you your first job. Wow. Yeah. It so, would have been a, on the playground you just said? Yeah, yeah. My, my, kid, the, he, my, I, my daughter and his daughter were the same age. So oh, how fun. Okay. I didn't get her on the playground. <laughs> yeah. And um, so that's how it started. And again, I knew nothing. Of, it turned out that John was, was a very high-end meeting planner. Um, his uh, clients were mostly pharmaceutical, uh, and they were big, prestigious meetings. So my very first event was with one of these clients, um, Sanofi Pasteur, uh, and, uh, and that's what got me started. How cool. So what was the biggest challenge that you kind of encountered starting, starting this business in the events industry? Well, let's see. I mean, the challenges changed <laughs> as the, as the business evolved. Mm-hmm. Uh, initially, the biggest challenge was I had no idea what I was doing. Um, I had to learn on the fly. I had to, um, basically, I mean, how I developed the programs is I created prototypes uh, and then would would sort of persuade and conjole friends and business contacts to 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 sit like to participate in the program, but in a prototype way. Oh, how funny! So, so we ran the pro- the program many times with these kind of groups, almost almost like tests. Um, so we kind of worked out a lot of the kinks. But I must say, um, until we got the first event, I wasn't completely sure it was going to work. Um, so, um, so the, the 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 initial challenges were 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 basically figuring out how to engage people in a, in a real and genuine way with music. And, and you know, our programs are all designed for people who know nothing about music. So, so how do you take someone from thinking that there's no way they can do what we're going to ask them to do, uh, which is to, you know, to, to participate in a musical program um, and actually benefit from it? How oh, cool. And so then what, what's the challenges you have now? So, so now, so, so, uh, particularly since, and I moved to the U S, uh, six years ago, uh, but particularly since moving to the U S my biggest challenge is marketing. Um, it's, it's, uh, the events business, uh, is large <laughs> as far as industries go. It's multi billions of dollars and the large players in the industry, um, are quite a bit bigger than me. Um, so, you know, in terms of, of, kind of getting heard overall all the noise that's out there so so whether it's in a magazine or at a conference or or you know on social media uh it's it's tough for a small company to get heard so that is without a doubt my biggest challenge yeah yeah and it seems like it's gotten more harder and harder when you think it would have been easier as you have more channels to find people yeah, exactly. And also the skill sets have changed. So, you know, when I started the business, social media didn't really exist. Right. Um, and really the biggest way of marketing at that time um, was was face to face. It was either cold calling, you know, people on the phone uh, or by email or it was meeting people at conferences and, and, and you know, and meetings like MPI or PCMA or, you know, association meetings. Um, I did, you know, in the first, I would say the first six years of the business, I would say roughly half my business resulted from face-to-face meetings. Really? Yeah. And then the other half were referrals. Uh-huh. So I did very little marketing, like like traditional. I mean, I did a lot of marketing, but not traditional. Like I wasn't taking out magazine ads and stuff like that because mm-hmm. I couldn't afford to. Um, so, so, but now I would say face-to-face is not nearly as important today as it once was. 
Um, I find, I mean, I go to, to, you know, networking events on a regular basis and, but I book very little business, uh, uh, from, uh, as a re- result of going to those meetings, uh, social media has become much more important. Um, well, like I say, it didn't even exist 13 years ago. Uh, and th- you need skill sets. Like you have to know what you're doing on social media. You just can't, you know, it's a whole nother skill set. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, uh, and it is interesting. I've I've run into the same same exact thing with our business, and it was all it's it was it's basically all referrals is how I get business, which mm-hmm. is interesting. Yeah, I mean, and I guess that's kind of historically how it goes in general. But the social media stuff can help a lot. Yeah. Um. So, do you have a moment, an aha moment, that you knew that you made the right decision in in getting into this? Um. Yeah, I think stars. That- yeah, I do. It would have been my second event. So the first event, which was for a pharmaceutical company, I, I, was was one of the most difficult days of my life. Um, but, because, again, I, I was, you know, even though I had prototyped uh, the activity, I knew how to do the program. I hired good people. Um, I had a big staff. Um, there, I made a whole lot of mistakes. Uh, that for that first program. Fortunately, they were all behind the scenes kind of mistakes. They had more to do, mostly to do with logistics, like how, mm-hmm. how to actually create uh, a team building activity. And, and the group was a small group. It was a group of 55 people. Um, but I must say, I, I was, I was, I don't think I've ever worked that hard in one day in my life. Uh, and it was a 15 hour day. And, and then, and then it dropped off after we were done. And I, I was, this this event took place uh, uh, at a beautiful hotel about an hour and a half north of Toronto, and um, you know by the time we were out there it was about two in the morning and it, there was a blinding blizzard. So I had to drive home after after this the most this crazy day, uh, which had its lows and its highs. I mean, so so, so the highs were it worked. I had fifty five people. Uh, just completely engaged and just having a great time with the activity and 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 meeting all the objectives that the meeting planner had given me for the activity. So 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 that was the good news. The bad news was logistically it was a nightmare because I just like I say I just didn't know what I was doing. But anyway, it all worked out well. Nothing that was going on logistically was noticed by the client or or by the participants. Um, but um, like I say, I remember driving home in that snowstorm. <laughs> Thank Holy you. moly. Yeah, I bet you slept what, well. You must what have, slept have I well. got myself? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I bet you slept well that night. But Yeah. And then the second event, um, I worked out all the kinks and the logistics. The second event went really smooth. The client was thrilled. And, and that's when I had the aha moment. That's when I said, okay, now, now I know this is going to work. That's very cool. So um, – so for people who don't know exactly, can you take us through what um, what you do basically? So h- how does Rock the Stars work? What, what, if I was to call you or someone was to call you, how would it work from start to finish? Well, we we do we do um, team building with music, uh, 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 and and what that means is is um, well, let me see. How can I describe it best? Um, Everything, we have five different programs. So everything we do involves music and everything we do involves participants um, learning how to do something musical, whether it's playing an instrument or writing a song or performing on stage, learning some sort of skill uh, and then um, taking that skill and putting it into action action as a group. So, So our core program is called You Rock, which is short for the University of Rock. And in that program, we take a group of people, we form them into smaller teams, typically teams of eight to 10. Each one of those teams becomes a rock band. And each one of those rock bands learns how to play a rock song with real instruments. So there's no backtrack. Um, uh, it's not Guitar Hero or something like that. We set up uh, rehearsal studios within the hotel. Typically, we're working in hotels and convention centers, but we, we t- set up rehearsal studios and breakout rooms. Uh, the rehearsal studios have all the rock instruments, guitars, drums, bass, the whole thing. And we teach them how to play, even though when we start the program, we assume that nobody knows anything about music. So, so and that's kind of that collaboration. And in order to perform as a rock band, you've got to listen to each other. You've got to solve problems together. 
Um, you've got to be creative. You've got to figure out how to start and stop the song and how to arrange it. There's all sorts of things that you have to do in order to, to, to perform the song. And all those things um, are great team building activities, things that, that kind of kind of you know put people on the same page um, and, um, and, and carry on from there. So that's our core program. And then we have four other programs. We have one where people write their own lyrics um, to, to popular songs and then perform them. We have one where people put on their own Broadway-style musical. Wow. <laughs> yeah, they write a script. Um, they create a set. Uh, they create a song and dance routine. Uh, and then we actually put on a musical. So they do their own musical. Um, and then we have um, one where uh, a team lip sync contest. So we, we create a, a stage uh, with props. The props would be all the rock instruments, drums, guitars, that kind of thing. Um, and then we have teams come up uh, in a competition format um, to, to lip sync, air guitar, air drum, all those things. Um, and we also dress them up in costume. I have this huge rock star costume collection that I've been you know, putting together for the last 13 years. So I, we can dress up to 500 people. So we dress everybody up in costume. They get up on stage, the air guitar and lip sync, uh, uh, and in a battle bands format, and then there's a winner at the end of the activity. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all really fun. Uh, and, you know, that was always the direction I wanted to go to. I, I, I come out of, you know, my high-tech background, but also my business background. You know, business, uh, particularly working in a corporate environment, is stressful quite a bit of the time. Mm -hmm. uh, and particularly today, uh, uh, you know, people are people today are doing this the, the job that maybe two or three people would have done 10, 15 years ago. So, you know, the average uh, corporate worker is very busy, um, you know, gives their all to their, to their job during the day. Um, and I don't want to add to that stress. As a matter of fact, I want to take the stress away. Um, and so all of our programs are purposely designed to be fun, to be engaging, to take people out of their day-to-day -day reality and kind of put them into a fantasy world. That's what we're trying to do. So it's not just team building. It's also um, it's stress relief uh, and getting people in a space where they can think different. Very cool. And and so, how do they choose which one of these to do? Is it how do you when they when if I was to come to you, how what's the is there like a you know a different size or I mean I guess probably you have the same clients coming back, so you needed more and more stuff to do different. Yeah, well, that that was definitely part of it. I mean, and and the and the programs all kind of grew organically. Um, some of them actually started from from clients. Clients would give me an idea, say, "How oh, you know have you ever thought of doing this?" Uh, and then I would build a program around that. Um, um, but yeah, it was it was it was definitely to have variety because we we certainly have we have clients that we've done dozens of events for. So so we certainly need a variety. Um, but it was it, it just as important was 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 the logistics. Uh, so when you go into a hotel, um, or sorry, when a client brings you into a hotel, you don't always have everything you want. So for example, when I was talking about the UROC program, I described setting up the the rehearsal studios and breakout rooms. Well, sometimes we're in venues that don't have breakout rooms. So so that was how. So um, I came up with the, 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 the lip sync contest was, you know, just what can we do that's really fun and we only have one room to work in. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's, that, that's, that's how the lip sync contest came about. And then, you know, there's always lots of logistical issues, but there's also objectives. I mean, sometimes um, planners um, and HR our people will come to me with very, like we just did an event last week in San Diego. They had a very specific objective. This particular company had recently acquired another company. Um, this was their first meeting uh, bringing the companies together. Oh. And um, the companies weren't really on the same page culturally, <laughs> you know, two different companies, two different corporate cultures, um, you know, pretty common problem when, when companies merge. Um, so they wanted a specific activity that would just bring people together, having fun, having a great time together and bonding. Um, so, so that, so we did lip sync contest for that. Whereas, you know, other times, you know, there'll be different objectives and then the UROC program would be more important or, or, or the, the musical program, uh, the Broadway style musical program. So it kind of depends on, on the, those two things, like, like why people would choose a certain program or why did, we would adopt. And so one would be the objectives of the, of the activity and the second would be the logistics. Very cool. Okay, so where do you see this going in the future? How do you think it's going to evolve? Um, I think that that um, it's going to evolve. Um, well, it's 
we're, we're going to develop more programs. I mean, we'll certainly develop more programs. But I think how it's going to evolve, evolve with people is as society becomes more technical, the desire for people to connect with each other becomes stronger. Um, you know, and I, I think, uh, you know, sort of examples of this are, for example, like like right now in the, the, the bar scene uh, in San Francisco and other cities, um, games are really popular, like board games. <laughs> so you, yeah. you go into a club and you'll see a stack of Monopoly and Life and Risk and all these kind of classic board games. And that's so that people can connect with each other. So they can put their phones down and... There's a real need for that. Um, you know, you see, again, you see bars that, 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 that millennials are going to that have ping pong tables and, and pool tables or, a, or small bowling alleys or lots, lots of stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So act activities where, that don't involve your screen device in some way, uh, I think, are going to become more and more important to people just as a contrast to their life. Um, you know, no one person wants to do one thing all the time. I mean, I'm a drummer. That's my musical instrument. I don't want to play drums all day long. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, but the same with work. I mean, I don't want to work all day long. And I don't want to be on social media all day long. I don't want to be staring at my screen all day long. I, I need variety. And as human beings, we need variety in our life. So I think that that as meetings and the meeting industry is becoming more technical, there's no doubt about it. Um, I think, you know, we're not that far off from, from virtual reality in meetings. Um, I don't think we're... I, I don't think we're that far off from actually having large conferences in 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 cyberspace. Mm-hmm. Uh, we know physical location for the conference, uh, and that uh, you know people with virtual reality, people will will feel like they're there. I mean, I don't think we're that far off from that. You know, certainly within the next ten years would be my guess. Um, but as as you become more and more technical, the need to connect one on one with another human being becomes even stronger. And that, that, that's how I see my business evolving, is, is facilitating those connections. Hmm. So what are you struggling with uh, right now with this whole thing, professionally or personally? Are you having a str- any kind of struggles? Um, well, I think, you know, as I mentioned earlier, marketing, <laughs> marketing is a constant struggle. Yeah. And, and, you know, I'm constantly having to relearn how to do things. Um, and kind of on my own. I mean, if I was a big company, I would be hiring consulting firms and, <laughs> and saying, you yeah, know, how do I do this and how do I do that? And can you put together a plan to do this or do that? But, but of course, as a small business, you can't afford to do stuff like that. So you kind of have to figure it out yourself. So that's a huge challenge. Uh, and how do you balance your day between, you know, learning a new skill or, or learning a new way to do things and all the other tasks that you have as, as, a, as, a, as an entrepreneur, uh, you know, developing your business and, and creating the programs and working with clients and all that kind of stuff. So, so that's a huge challenge. Um, and what's, what's certainly been my biggest challenge right now. Um, I think also the nature of work has changed a lot in the last uh, six years. And, and I, I think the last recession, I mean, the, you know, it was, it was a large recession, certainly the largest recession um, in, in my lifetime. Um, and it changed a lot of things. So, and one of the things that changed is 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 the number of people working in corporate environments um, that I can deal with. So, so prior to the recession, um, I was working with clients who might have had an internal um, group of, let's say, twenty five people planning events. So that same client, post recession, laid off roughly a third of those people on average. So they go from a department of 25 down to a department of 15, maybe, or 18, something like that. And and those same 15 or 18 people are doing the work that 25 people were doing before. And um, and now, since the economy's uh, improved so much uh, in the last few years, um, they're doing even more work. So it's not like they're just doing the work prior to the recession. They're doing even more work now, but companies haven't staffed up. So... Consequently, you're dealing with event planners who are run ragged. Yeah. And to get their attention is really tough. Um, so, so that's another big challenge is, 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 is just, you know, connecting with, with, with the people who want to hire me uh, and, and, and in a way that, 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 you know, solves their issues. Very cool. I think you're totally right. People are just. It seems like all the planners that I'm working with are just the same way. They're running, running, running ragged. Yeah. So I mean, you can't you can't get upset if somebody doesn't reply to your email or return your phone call. Um, it, you can't because again, like I, I just like I, I speak to event planners all the time who, who get like 200 voicemails a day or, or, or 200 emails a day, and and wow. 
there's just no way they can respond to them all, um, nor should they. So unless you're kind of top of mind. So in, in, the, in the event planning world, when, you, when you're booked, let's say you're, you want to book a, a meeting for 100 people uh, in, in, in the great city of San Francisco, um, you, know, the, you start with, with hotel and flights. That's the first thing you start with. Um, and that might be, you know, depending on the business, anywhere from three months to 12 months out, out from the meeting. Uh, and then it kind of, everything kind of comes after that. So, so, you know, food and, 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 uh, and, and beverages and, and that kind of thing. And then team building entertainment is kind of the last thing to get booked. So if I'm not, so if I'm trying to get with a meeting planner, I know a meeting planner is holding a meeting. I want to pitch them what I do and, 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 and learn about their objectives and see how I can fit in. They don't even want to talk to me <laughs> until two or three months out from the meeting because they're just too busy doing all the other stuff. Wow. So you really have to do your homework to kind of know when people are having their meetings and then be hitting them up at the correct times. Yeah. But that's where social media comes in. So that's that's the great thing about social media is that if, if you're doing a good job on social media, hopefully people are aware of you. Yeah. Um, and then, um, like I find, like cold calling doesn't really work anymore. Uh, it does. Just, I shouldn't say that. It does. It does work from time to time, but it's 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 very labor intensive. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, you might have to make fifty calls to get one lead, for example. Um, whereas with when you're on social media. Um, uh, and then, you know, social media is supported by your website. Um, you can get people coming to you rather than you having to go out and find them. Yeah, I totally agree. Totally agree. Okay. So I want to ask you a few questions, just kind of get to know Stuart. Um, this is kind of trying to, so people can maybe pick up some nuggets of info from you, um, uh. cause you are a successful entrepreneur. Um, Take us through a typical day. So do you have any like morning rituals? Do you food, <laughs> you know, kind of a thing? Do you have exercise, you know, regular reading in the morning? Do you have like a, a – take us through your kind of – do you have any typical day for students? Well, I definitely have rituals. <laughs> so I love reading the newspaper. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I read the newspaper every morning. Uh, and that's kind of how I start my day. Um, and I also like eating – healthy and well. So I make my a breakfast for myself from scratch every morning. So I read the paper, you know, I make myself breakfast. Um, I have a coffee and that's basically how I start my day. Um, and then I work at home. I have a home office. So, you know, I, I go from that uh, right into my office. Um, I check emails that have come in overnight. Um, just, you know, and what I'm looking for is just any, any client related email that needs my attention fairly quickly. Uh, so, so, and that might be a request for a proposal or a question about an event or a follow up, whatever. I always deal with clients first. Uh, and that's roughly, you know, the first half hour of my work day. Um, and then after that, then I just go into project mode. So whether it's uh, writing up a proposal for a specific event or working on a marketing program or putting out a newsletter or updating the website or you know, a hundred other things that I might, yeah, yeah. my project <laughs> list. That's what I work on after that. That's great. So yeah. what do you want to be as a kid? As a kid? Yeah. I, wanted to, I wanted to be a lawyer. Did you really? I did. And why didn't you? Um, I didn't like school. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, 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 and I was also very impatient. I was a, a very impatient uh, per, young person. And I just felt, I also, I, I mean, I wanted to be a lawyer, but, but I also love business. Um, and um, I just figured out early on that I could do what I wanted to do in the business world much quicker than I could do what I wanted to do as a lawyer. Mm-hmm. I just didn't have the patience to go to law school. Hmm. Interesting. And so what book is on your nightstand right now? Um, let's see. I, the Keith Richards biography is there. Huh. Um, is it good? Yeah, it is actually. Um, he's a crazy guy. <laughs> so. Yes, he is. <laughs> it's an interesting read. I mean, I say he's crazy. I mean, ever, I think everybody thinks of Keith Richards as crazy. He's actually got a lot going on behind uh, the craziness. Uh, he's very intelligent. He is uh, a textbook of knowledge uh, about uh, Americana music uh, as well as British music. Uh, he's a really, I find him a really interesting guy. 
Huh. And then what book do you gift others? Is there a book that you like to give other people? I like to give Dr. Seuss books. <laughs> really? I do. I do. It's uh, And to me, it's – so it, it works in all ways. So – if it's if it's someone with a child, obviously, yeah, it, it, it's some you know a parent can read to a child, um, you know that's a good thing. But even as adults, there's something about Doctor Seuss that just resonates with every age. What is the book? What's your favorite one? Um, it's um, oh, the title escapes me right now. It's the yeah, sorry, Mike. The, the, it's, it's okay. The, <laughs> you don't yeah. remember that? I would. I, well, I was trying to think of one, one like Green Eggs and Ham. No, no, I, it's not Green <laughs> Eggs and Ham. I love Green Eggs and Ham. Uh, this, it's he wrote one book about philosophy, a child's book about philosophy, and uh, I apologize, the name's escaping me right now. But uh, huh. yeah. no, no worries, no worries at all. Yeah. Um, do you listen to podcasts? I do. And what what podcasts do you enjoy? Um, I like a few. Um, I love Mark Maron. Mm-hmm. Um. I listen to a drummer's podcast, which is really interesting, a really good interviewer. I love interviews. Um, uh, I listen to Terry Gross, uh, uh, NPR interviews. Um, those would be my top three, probably. Actually, my top two would be Terry Gross and Mark Maron. Nice. And then I like, to, I like to listen to TED Talks as well. Perfect. Um, you ever had a nickname? Um, well, I'm a redhead. So I had lots of, of nicknames when I was younger, <laughs> most of them not very pleasant. So I, <laughs> I think as I got older, I, I, I on purpose shied away from nicknames. How funny. Um, and do you listen to, what kind of music do you listen to? Or do you listen to music when you work? Do you listen to like a Pandora or a Spotify channel, something that's? Um, I don't listen to music while I work, um, though I think listening to music while you work is a good thing for most people, but for whatever reason, my, my brain doesn't, uh, doesn't respond well to it. And I think maybe it's because I am a musician. So when I'm listening to music, I, I get engaged with music mm-hmm. in a different way. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm analyzing it. I'm trying to figure out, I'm thinking, oh, how would I play that and stuff like that. So, so for me, music is, is, is very engaging. So if I'm, in, if I'm listening to music, um, I can't work at the same time, or at least not work effectively. Um, so, so I don't listen to music while I'm working, but I listen to music all the time when I'm driving, when I'm making a meal, um, when I'm doing work. Um, I have music going most of the time. Hmm. And let's see, do you have a favorite documentary or movie that you uh, really, really love? Um. I, I have some, yeah, I do actually. I mean, I, so in terms of movie, I mean, I have lots of movies that I love. I can't say that I have a favorite movie. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I, I really don't. There's lots of movies that I love. And in terms of documentaries, um, I love music documentaries. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> like, and I'll watch. So I love watching like like documentaries about bands. Like, like I've watched the Metallica documentary. I don't know how many times. Um, I just saw one on Kansas. I, I, I was never a big Kansas fan, but the, I thought the documentary was fascinating. Um, so I really love uh, documentaries about music. Um, do you believe you have one unfair advantage, and what would that be, and why? Well, I don't. I don't really believe in unfair advantages. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do believe in advantages, however, um, and um, I think if it, you know my. My, my advantage would be I have the ability to see the big picture. Um, I, I, I can rise above the forest and, and, and look what's around oh, me. That's great. Especially and I, I think that's a big advantage. Yeah, that's very good in business. I had, I've had uh, meetings where we will, you know, do that whole um, airplane analogy of, you know, we're looking at it from 10 feet. Let's fly higher and look at it, you know, from, <laughs> yeah. you know. 100,000 feet instead. Um, who are the three people you would like to invite to dinner? Well, let's see. Besides me. <laughs> I was just thinking of three mics, but uh, yeah. I think, I mean, from any it, time. It, it could be from any time. I, I love dinner conversation and dinner parties. I really do. Like, that's one of my favorite things to do. Uh, my wife and I. We have dinner parties all the time. We just enjoy them. So, I mean, I would be thrilled 
to have you at a dinner party. Uh, you know, Andy Sharp is a mutual friend of the two of us. Uh, and maybe a third person, maybe someone from MPI. Like that to me would be a great dinner party. Um, but if it, was, if it was a fantasy dinner party, it would be the Dalai Lama <laughs> um, with uh, John Lennon uh, and Barack Obama. That would be my fantasy. Oh, funny. Okay, that's great. Yeah. And speaking of MPI, so you're a board member there. How's that? How's that been going? Uh, well, well, I mean, the, the Nor- I'm a board member for the Northern California chapter, which mm-hmm. is, which is San Francisco, Oakland, San Jose, and um, it's a great chapter. Um, I really enjoy the people uh, that I that I've connected with on the board, um, and it, it allows me to, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I don't I don't get as much business as I used to from face-to-face meetings with people and, and my MPI involvement, um, but it fulfills other needs. And, and MPI um, is a great, great learning venue. Um, we have education meetings all the time, conferences. So, um, you know, as, as, as a small business person who works at home, it's super important for me to get out and see what's going on in the world, uh, particularly in the meetings world. So MPI is really good for that. Um, the other thing MPI does for me is it gives me volunteer opportunities. So, so the board position is a volunteer position. Um, and, but we also do quite a bit of community involvement events where we're, we're working with different charities. Um, you know, so whether it's um, – we do one, for example, with, with, with called Homeless Connects, um, where um, we're providing services for home, homeless people uh, in, in this, that sort of big day thing that happens where we're like over 2,000 homeless people are, are, are brought in uh, to the Bill Graham Civic Auditorium in San Francisco and given access to all the services that they don't normally have access to. So health care, housing, uh, job, you know, identification, uh, and, and simple things like, like feet washing and haircuts. So, um, so to have the ability um, to and then we do other like we're we're just planning one right now where uh, we're um, we're going to go into schools and read to young children uh, Dr. Seuss books as a matter of fact. Oh, so I really enjoy that. Uh, so I think for me MPI um, plugs me into a larger world uh, that I don't normally have access to. That's great. It's really great. Um, I need to spend more time going to MPI. <laughs> Because I think I, I always enjoy. I just go to some of the some of the things they have every once in a while, and I really enjoy it. I should spend more time. Um, okay, so we have a couple more minutes here. So let me ask you a couple quick questions. What's the best advice you've ever received? Don't give up. Who gave you that? <laughs> um, well, let's see. It started with my dad, um, but I've also had that same advice from from various mentors over the years. Um, you know, persevere as an entrepreneur, or not even as an entrepreneur, just, just as anybody in life, perseverance uh, trumps almost anything else in terms of being successful. Sometimes you just got to keep at it. That's awesome. Um, what's working for you right now? Do you have a new uh, app, a vitamin, you know, uh, work hack, time saver, something that you're, what's, what's working for you? Well, I have no magic formula, that's for sure. Um, yeah, I find I, you know, I, so I'm, I'm, I'm like productivity is a big issue for me. Like how, how can I be more productive? Um, and, and that's like, a, that's a constant struggle for me. Um, but I find there's no magic solution to that. Um, discipline is really the biggest thing. Um, I mean, I've tried all sorts of different apps. Uh, I've tried lots of stuff and 90% of them don't work for me. Um, so really my hack is, is it's, it's just me. It's, it's my attitude, my approach, my mental discipline, uh, my energy level. Like those are the things that, that are, that I find work the best for me. If I can get all those, that stuff happening. So that means, you know, be eating well, exercising, getting decent sleep. Like those, those are my hacks. Yeah. Those are good though. <laughs> uh, they are. And what's, what's your favorite industry event that you attend and uh, why is, why? Why is it so compelling? Well, let's see. I, I think, I guess the the um, there's there's a couple. So so and they're they're both really different. So so MPI has an annual conference called WEC World Education Conference, and that conference is is very good. Um, it's a combination of um, lots of education um, with big crazy parties and networking. 
And so, and it's typically held in a city, uh, either a large city or, or a smaller center, but, but cities, and I love traveling, so you get to explore the city. And, and, and so, so I like that conference. Um, and then my other favorite would be um, the MPI Northern California chapter has a gala in June every year. And I just always really enjoy that. It's, uh, again, it's, 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 you know, I mean, you're working for myself. Um, I don't get to put on corporate dinners or parties or anything like that. So, so for me, that gala is kind of like, like, um, the one, one day a year I get to dress up, put a suit on, uh, eat a nice meal, uh, you know, and hang out with good people, but in kind of a corporate setting. That's funny. And do you, uh, what's, what's your favorite one, uh, favorite event just in general? Like, do you like, do you have, uh, you know, a lot of people have said, Oh, you know, burning man or whatever, you know, what, <laughs> what's, what, do you have an event that you love to go to? I'm sure it's I, something musical. I would love to go to, to the, to the, to the main Ted. Oh, to Ted. Yeah. That would be my, 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 my dream. My wife and I just bought tickets to go watch the first day or opening evening at movie theaters. They're doing that. Yes, I know. So you got tickets for that. Yeah, we're going to go see it in Emeryville here by the house. Oh, awesome. 15th, yeah. I thought it would be kind of funny to go do, but we're going to a movie theater, so I guess we'll have popcorn and <laughs> Cokes and be watching it. Yeah, I should do that. I mean, I'm sure there's 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 movie theaters in the South Bay doing that as well. Yeah, I heard about that. But yeah, I mean, because it's, it's, that would work really well, actually. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be fun. Um, okay, what's uh, what's the coolest new trend you have seen or excited about, or the coolest new thing or whatever? It doesn't have to be a trend; it could be a thing. In, in the meetings industry, yeah. Well, the, the, I, the coolest thing I've seen in the last year is this um, audience microphone that is in a soft cube. So, so picture a plush. Toy. So in this case, the plush toy is a, is a cube that's 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 roughly twelve inches by twelve inches by twelve inches, and inside this cube is a microphone. It's a wireless microphone that's connected to the AV system in the room, and you can th- it's soft, so you can throw it. So it's the coolest thing ever. So so you know, like like traditionally, when you have audience members asking questions after a talk, you know, they line up with a microphone, or somebody passes them a microphone, and there's always you know, delays and stuff like that. In this case, with this cube, you, you, if you're speaking, you're asking your question. When you're done, you throw the cube to the next person. Yeah. So I, I, I had the guy, I had them on the, on the podcast here before to talk about it. Catch box. Yeah. Yeah. So I just think it's super cool. And since I first saw it, uh, I guess it was about a year ago. I first saw it. Um, I've now, been at like like the meeting i just i just did a, a, a rock the stars event in san diego for you know i was talking about it earlier mm-hmm. they had the cubes there like it's, it's just it's just everybody loves them such a great idea i thought so yeah i think it was genius <laughs> okay so last question um if you could talk to the high school senior you what would you tell yourself um let's see what would i as a high school senior so with all my hormones raging, <laughs> now as, an, as a, a mature adult, <laughs> what would I say to that individual? Uh, I would say chill out. That's what I would say. I'd say things are going to work out. You know, don't worry. That's what I would say. That's funny. A lot of people either say that, chill out, or don't work so hard, or they'll be say, I wish you would do something. <laughs> It's one or the other. Yeah. You know, hard, hard lines. Um, okay, Stuart, so where can people get a hold of you if they want to um, contact you well, and hire Rock the Stars to do some <laughs> cool uh, team building for their next event? Well, let's see. I mean, um, you can call me uh, at 408-368-1058. You can send an email to Stuart at rockthestars.com. You can connect with us uh, on Twitter at rockthestars one. Uh, on Facebook at Rock the Stars Corp, um, or Instagram just as Rock the Stars. Very cool. Okay, and I appreciate you taking the time to talk to me, and um, thank you so much. Thanks, Mike. Great questions. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye. Okay. Bye bye. Okay. Thank you so much for listening to the show. I wanted to thank 
IMAX, I also wanted to say thank you, the listener. I appreciate you listening to these podcasts. It's a lot of fun to meet these people and talk to them. We are also doing podcasting for events now, so check that out. It's at grashackroad.com. We are doing them for associations and companies, which is kind of fun. We're um, setting them up for their events, so their sponsors are paying for them, just like this gets paid for. So check it out. It's at uh, grashackroad.com, and you can find everything about that, and you can always contact me uh, at meetingspodcast at gmail.com or mike at grassshackroad.com. Also, would love it if you went into iTunes and left a review. It really helps us get found. And uh, though we are now being sent out in several different newsletters for different um, uh, meetings industry newsletters, which is fun, but uh, it always helps. So, And I appreciate you again. Thank you. I will talk to you next time. We appreciate and thank you for listening to the Meetings Podcast. Please email with any questions or comments to meetingspodcast at gmail.com. The Meetings Podcast is sponsored by IMAX America, America's worldwide exhibition for incentive travel, meetings, and events. The Meetings Podcast theme music is brought to you by the Delgado Brothers, which can be found at delgadobrothers.com.